Hello and welcome. I am here today with Kevin Clark, the CEO of Now Diagnostics. I'm Mo Holloman, and we're going to talk today a little bit about the Joplin Regional Innovation and Technology Summit and what you can expect. So Kevin's one of our speakers, and we thought it would be fun to get a little teaser of what he'll be sharing and a little bit of his history. So Kevin, welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. Yes, well, we're glad to have you. And so I thought we could start out today with you sharing a little bit about NOW Diagnostics and what people can expect from your presentation at the Tech Summit. So NOW Diagnostics got started in 2014, um, really as a request from a local CPG company that um, was looking for entire categories of products that they could sell OTC. Um, so everything from uh, sexually transmitted diseases, to food intolerances, to common infectious diseases, things like influenza, strep throat, mono, pink eye, RSV. Um, we can now throw COVID in that category. Um, our goal, our mission has been since the beginning to be able to provide uh, laboratory quality results in a format that anyone can do, any layperson can run, and do it at a price point that is let's say less than a copay that anybody can afford. Yeah, and so I was reading a little bit online about your company and there were some things I really liked. So it, you, you talk a little bit about the reduced cost and wait times in as little as 15 minutes on all of your products or most of your products and real time peace of mind. And you really empower patients and caregivers to be able to have the information they need to make those decisions that maybe would have taken in the past uh, days, weeks, and a whole lab worth of people. Can you share a little bit about how you've been able to make that process a little more seamless for all of the users involved? Sure, absolutely. So this is a, an example of our, our technology. Uh, the IP is all around the microfluidics of the little device and then how the membranes are stacked in there to be able to separate the cellular constituents away from the plasma portion of the blood and then we can test basically anything in the plasma portion of the blood. We've expanded that to include uh, other sample matrices, so saliva is another example. Um, what ends up happening is you prick your finger for the blood platform, you prick your finger touch the device to it, you lay it down, 10 minutes later you get a result. So think of it as a cross between um, a glucose test and a urine-based uh, pregnancy test. But we've been able to drive the sensitivity and specificity to the points where we're providing laboratory quality results. And it's really just the tiniest sample too, which is also pretty revolutionary. You really don't need much of a sample, right? It's 40 microliters, which is less than a drop of blood, and there are no no other reagents required. So no other buffers, no other second step. It's all self-contained, and just 10 minutes later, you get a result. You get uh, one line that shows up at the control that tells you the test worked, and then another line show up at the test if it were positive, at the test line, if it were positive. So speaking of innovation, I just think it's important to note what that process has looked like in the past and just how much of a game changer that really is for the field of medicine. Absolutely. So what it, and you know, historically what would happen is for any of these tests that we're working on, you would go into the doctor's office and provide a sample. They would draw a tube of blood. They would then send it off to a reference lab, you know, the East Coast for infectious, West Coast for uh, genomic uh, type tests and then you know two days later the results come back your physician then has to reach out to you and find out whether or not uh, you know you find out whether or not the test was positive or negative um, so you know it goes from days down to weeks the uh, strep throat's uh, an incredible example of how we've been able to shorten that you know uh, my kids uh, when Either one of them would end up getting strep throat. My wife would end up taking off work, taking them both to the doctor. Um, you know, if they didn't have strep throat before they went, they probably did by the time they got out of there, you know, from chewing on the toys and the 
in the doctor's office. And no matter what, they would end up getting a dose of amoxicillin. So um, this test would allow you to stop by, you know, uh, any retail outlet, CBS, Walgreens, Walmart, any of those places, pick up a test, take it home, have your child uh, spit a, a drop of saliva into the test. 10 minutes later, you get a positive or a negative. And you basically at that point make the decision, do I need to go to the doctor or do I not? Um, that's that's very exciting to all the third party payers out there uh, to be able to cut all those negatives out of the system that don't need to be there. Absolutely. And then on top of that, you really are doing what you say you want to do, which is create a world with greater access to the information they need to make those decisions, which I'm sure is pretty amazing to get to be a part of. It's uh, It's been exciting, that's for sure. I mean, COVID's another great example. Um, you know, I really believe that we're on the brink of a, a tipping point. Um, you know, the FDA and everyone has realized that uh, with the COVID pandemic, that the need for people to be able to test themselves and test themselves at their own home has just uh, really been brought forward. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's really interesting. So we're here now in a place where it's incredibly relevant to everyone in a very big way. You've been doing this a very long time, though. Uh, you have a great history. I probably shouldn't say very long time. You've been doing this a while. <laughs> and you have a history of doing these things. I was reading it was 126 products through the FDA process. You've been involved in scaling diagnostics companies. So from the the innovation side and also as a, the business side, you've really had a great history. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Uh, sure, it, you're absolutely right. It's been a while, uh, 35 years in the diagnostic industry. I started my first company uh, while I was working on my master's in immunology. Um, ended up selling that company to one of my biggest uh, customers, uh, Ivex Pharmaceutical. Uh, we took that company, three others, rolled them together, and took it public back in 2001. Boy, I'm really telling you how old I am here. Uh, you know, we ended up, uh, I ended up being the COO for that company. Uh, after IVAX and Tiva merged, I was asked to step up into the CEO role. We ended up growing that uh, company. To 13 different uh, manufacturing facilities all around the world. Uh, I was just spending every day traveling or every week traveling somewhere. Um, and so it, it was quite a wild ride. Uh, when this opportunity, now diagnostics, uh, was presented to me as an opportunity, uh, it didn't take me long to realize that this opportunity was could be much larger than what I was doing. And so it took me about eight months to retire out of that CEO role. And we came and uh, started Now Diagnostics. And you know, this really leads in nicely to the last question that I have for you, which is around what other people can learn from visiting with you or listening to your presentation. You're a great businessman and an entrepreneur. So I really feel like there's a lot here for everybody. Can you speak to what someone might expect who's not in the medical field or what they can anticipate from listening to your presentation? Well, I had really planned on talking about, uh, you know, this tipping point, you know, the changes we're starting to see in uh, the diagnostic industry as a whole uh, that have come around because of the pandemic. Um, you know, the, the change in attitude of the FDA, the need desire to be able to test individuals at home um, and have more information than ever before and being able to provide that in a format that they can you know that they can do themselves and or have results in just a matter of minutes uh, instead of days like it's always been in the past so I think that's the direction that uh, I'll be speaking about so like I said it's safe to say if you come and listen to Kevin you will get an exciting presentation full of all kinds of things that might apply to you, some that may not directly apply to you, but in some way, all of this 
really does affect all of this. So I think it'd be a good idea for pretty much anybody to come, whether they're a CEO wanting to be inspired by another CEO, someone who works for a company who maybe just wants to come with new ideas or fresh ways to think about things. And then of course, just the information on what it is you do, because it really is incredible and we're really excited to have you. So Kevin, thank you so much for visiting with me today. Thank you, I really look forward to it. We look forward to seeing you and we look forward to seeing you at the Joplin Regional Innovation and Technology Summit on November 5th.